Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, which is the second part of my series examining the tremolo system in Brian May's Red Special Guitar in detail, I'll demonstrate the installation, setup, and basic function of the system with the help of a test rig. I'll also take the opportunity to compare my DIY components with a professionally made hardware set that's commercially available in the UK. Part 1 covered the design and fabrication of the three main steel components, and although it isn't necessary to have watched this first, it does provide useful context if you aren't familiar with the basic design of the Red Special Tremolo system. One commenter on my previous video pointed out that the Burns Rezo Tube system operates on a knife edge bearing pivot, as can be seen in this Guitar Adjustments Guide on the Burns website. Burns guitars would have been more readily accessible in 1960s Britain, and it's quite possible that Brian and Harold examined this Rezo Tube system, the Fender Tremolo, and others, and then worked the best features into their own unique design. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting, and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. To allow me to compare my DIY tremolo hardware with professional quality, commercially available components, RS Mods in the UK have provided me with one of their Relic hardware kits. These have been designed using the considerable knowledge within the Brian May enthusiast community, and are manufactured in the UK to offer home builders and professional luthiers alike more options to buy hardware for this unique guitar. Let's compare and contrast the three tremolo components I am featuring in this video with those in the RS Mods kit. It's tempting for enthusiasts making their own Red Special guitars to replicate every cosmetic and constructional detail of the original instrument exactly, but this isn't necessarily the best approach. While some of the features are difficult to improve on, and this is largely true for the tremolo system, there is scope to make some sensible judgments in the design and build process to make construction easier, and I'll show you some examples of those as we look at the components. Firstly, comparing the set screw retaining blocks, I have chosen to replicate the original component exactly for this series of two videos to illustrate how I understand that it was designed and made. However, it is unnecessarily wide and will require the upper and lower rebates in the oak inserts to be squared off with a wood chisel to achieve an accurate fit. The RS Mods component is designed to the metric equivalent of common imperial dimensions, so is 6mm thick, 50mm wide, and 17mm high. The holes are located exactly halfway up the part, and will be at the same relative vertical position in the guitar body as the original component. The corners are rounded over to allow the builder to easily route the required rebates with a 6mm cutter. The two knife edge bearing plates are very similar, and again, the RS Mods components uses metric steel plate and therefore is 3mm thick. The original guitar was designed in Imperial units, but the metric system has been in use for Europe for many decades, so most enthusiasts are more comfortable working in metric dimensions. The screw hole positions are a matter of judgement based on the X-ray images. I chose to place mine further from the sides than on the original guitar. Turning now to the tremolo rocker blocks, the two design interpretations are very similar, with almost identical overall width, height, and steel thickness. On this authentic kit, RS Mods have responded to customer demand and made a component exactly as Brian and Harold May produced it, with these two side pieces attached by machine screws. This is a very well designed and engineered component indeed, and it is a great option for enthusiasts who want the satisfaction of knowing all the parts of their guitar are correct under the hood. The set screw pass-through holes appear to be larger on the original guitar's components than the 3 8 inch or 9.5mm that I drilled them on mine, possibly 7 over 16 inch to 15 over 32 inch, or between 11 and 12mm. They are 10.5mm on this RS Mods hardware, and 12mm on Guyton Red Special hardware, so again open to judgement based on photographs of the original guitar. I'll describe the features of the spring assemblies in the next section, which covers the installation, setup, and demonstration. To demonstrate the installation, setup, and operation of the Red Special Tremolo hardware, I've made this guitar shaped test rig from 3 quarter inch plywood sheet and planed European oak. All the pieces are routed from timber offcuts I keep for drilling backing boards or to make mounting jigs, so the apparatus is a little bit rough and ready. This plywood sheet was previously stained black on one side, so there's no significance to that in this context. In the lower section of the guitar body, I have routed the shallow rebate in the tremolo cavity to accommodate the springs, and the rectangular rebate to locate the set screw retaining bar. 
I've painted these white for better contrast on camera. Turning now to the upper oak block, this has a 1 8 inch deep rebate for the knife edge bearing plate, a 3 8 inch deep rebate for the set screw retaining bar, and two cylindrical channels for the quarter inch diameter set screws. Most red special builds I have seen in construction have oversized square section channels routed to accommodate the set screws, but the original guitar has drilled holes like this, which you will see later minimize movement that could lead to tuning instability. As you can see, I have prepared the oak block for mounting by drilling the necessary pilot holes and screw head countersinks. As you watch me assemble the components, I'll describe the hardware and the fasteners used in the installation. The set screw retaining bar is rebated 1 8 inch into the lower body section and 3 8 inch into the upper oak block. The oak block itself is glued and screwed to the lower body section with two number 6 by 1 and a quarter inch long countersunk slotted wood screws. I'm not using any glue here because I want to disassemble this test rig later. The knife edge bearing plate is secured to the oak block using three number 10 by 1 and a quarter inch long countersunk slotted wood screws. This assembly is anchored to the lower guitar body section with two 3 16 inch BSF thread by one and a half inch long countersunk slotted set screws, which are bolted onto one inch diameter repair washers with half nuts. These shallow rebates would likely have been filled with epoxy resin on the original guitar, although on my red special build, I took advantage of my CNC machine to make oak biscuits to cover the bulk of the space around the hex nuts, then I filled any remaining smaller gaps flush with high performance wood filler. I have three different spring assemblies, including the RS Mods kit and the hardware used in the original run of Guyton Red Special Replicas. I'll install and demonstrate two in this section of the video, which feature different spring specifications and brass spring cup and insert arrangements. The head of the two and three quarter inch long, a quarter inch UNF thread set screws butts against a steel washer and a machined brass insert. The opposite end of the spring is located into the tremolo rocker block by a type of spring cup fashioned from number 20 gauge, approximately 0.8mm thick brass sheet with three folded tabs on each of the inner and outer rings. These were made to fit other hardware with 10mm pass through holes, so the engagement is not perfect in the rocker block that I've made. Since the inner diameter of the Panther motorcycle springs is approximately 11.5 millimeters, as I've noted earlier, it is likely that the pass-through holes in the original Red Special rocker block are larger than the 3 8 inch I've drilled in my block. Although I have easy access to tighten the set screws with a wrench on this open test rig, the slots milled across the flats of the hex head bolts allow the tension to be adjusted from the rear of the guitar using a flat blade screwdriver without opening up the tremolo cavity cover, so I've prepared mine in the same way to illustrate this. The tremolo hardware fitted to the original run of 50 Guyton Red Special replicas has a different arrangement to the original Red Special with a lathe turned brass spring cup to locate the springs into the tremolo block. It isn't necessary to use a brass insert at the set screw head end, and two washers like this will suffice, as you will see when I assemble and test this arrangement. The tremolo arm is mounted on a section of part threaded rod, 3 16 inch diameter on the original guitar, M5 on most modern replicas, and this is secured in place with a steel hexagon half nut. A steel spacer bushing raises the brass bushing on the tremolo arm above the string cowling to prevent contact. The assembly is secured with two washers, one brass and one steel, and then a steel hexagon half nut, and finally a brass dome nut to lock it into place. Although the two washers should allow free rotation of the arm, a common problem is that the threaded rod and the upper nuts can loosen if they're not adjusted correctly. Let's take a closer look at the assembly, and I'll give you some practical suggestions on how to secure the tremolo arm so that it articulates freely, but it doesn't loosen the threaded rod or the securing nuts. Although the first steel half nut is intended to prevent the threaded rod from coming loose from the rocker block, it's probably sensible to apply some thread lock glue to secure it. The steel bushing in the sequence here is unthreaded and therefore free to rotate, but there are other options, including using a threaded bushing and applying thread lock glue to hold it in place. The mounting rod on the Guyton Red Special Tremolo hardware appears to have been lathe turned from wider 13 over 32 inch or 10 mm diameter rod, and then the narrow sections part threaded. This results in the spacer bushing part being a single solid section of rod. Another good tip is that I've found that replacing the steel flat washer with a steel crinkle washer is a more effective way to hold the assembly secure while permitting free articulation. 
The crinkle washer acts as a spring, which compresses under tension and permits a greater range of adjustment of the resistance to the arm rotation. If you get this right, as you can see, I can freely move the arm in both directions and the upper nuts do not move. Let's move on then, by installing the authentic hardware from my Red Special guitar. Then I'll string it up and demonstrate how the system works. To give you an idea of what level of pretension to aim for, these springs were 38mm or 1.5 inches long uncompressed and end up at 33mm or 1.5 inch long when tuned correctly and the tremolo block balanced in the vertical position. I recently posted some progress updates on my Facebook page and several people asked about the available articulation range of the Brian May Red Special Tremolo System, so let's address that. From my CAD drawing, with the rocker block balanced in the vertical position, there's approximately a 2mm gap between the rocker and the wood. The original guitar configuration allows around 5.3 degrees of upward articulation, which is constrained by the dimensions of the oak blocks and the rebates. If you're designing and building your own Red Special replica and require a greater range of upward movement, this can be increased by cutting away some of the oak or making the knife edge protrude more from the face of the cavity. If you've bought a completed guitar, the only option you have to increase upward movement is to balance the block slightly forward. In the down pitch direction, theoretically you can achieve the full 15 degrees of articulation permitted by the angle on the knife edge bearing, although practically this will be constrained either by the maximum out of plane distortion of the springs or the rear face of the rebate. Do bear in mind that electric guitar tremolo systems were originally designed to allow the player to create a kind of shimmering effect, as exemplified by Hank Marvin in the shadows, not make large pitch variations such as dive bombs. If you do desire more upward movement, you can sacrifice some of the extensive downward movement range and balance the tremolo block according to your preference. There is no rule as such here. With the tremolo system now strung up and spring tension adjusted so that the rocker block balances vertically, all that remains is to demonstrate the system in operation for you. The neck on this 18mm thick plywood test rig bows under tension, and this unfortunately contributed to the black set of springs I've featured throughout the video being too compressed. <laughs> Well that's all I've got for you on the Red Special Tremolo system. I hope that you found this series of two videos informative, whether you're a newcomer to the Brian May scene, or you consider yourself to be a knowledgeable enthusiast. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.